everybody, this is SaberX coming to you live with another brand new video review for the 118th scale Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series. He's by Creative Beast Studio and David Silva. So, welcome back, and today we are going to be looking at the 118th scale adult Centrosaurus apertus. So here we are. There it is, and before we take a quick look at this figure, let's take a quick look at the packaging for it, shall we? <laughs> uh, so, here we have the massive, massive box for the Centrosaurus apertus, which has beautiful artwork done by Jax Jackson and Carlo Arellano. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely love this, and yeah, as you can see, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, inside the box, you come with your her customary diorama uh, that you can place behind the figure after you take it out of the box, and on the back, you also get your obligatory product shots of all the Wave 2 Ceratopsians. Hope you can see those nice and beautifully. <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely gorgeous. As well as your facts about the dinosaur itself, as you can see here. So, inside the box, in addition to the figure, you also get this wonderful little card with the same information on the back and a picture of the figure itself and you come with and you also get this um, set of oh so necessary instructions now you're really going to want to pay attention to these because you will need either a hair dryer or hot water to heat up the tail and attach it to the figure otherwise um, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to put the tail on the figure without breaking it. So, very, very important. Really, really pay attention to these. These are an absolutely necessary step in regards to assembling the figure and popping the tail into the ball joint at the base of the hips. So, that aside, let's take a look at the figure itself. So, here we have the adult Centrosaurus, which is undoubtedly one of my favorites. And it is one of my top 10 favorite Ceratopsians of all time. Now, the coloration for this adult Centrosaurus is based on an agamid lizard called the Blue Crested Lizard. And in my opinion, it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, really, how are you going to get any better than a realistic looking Centrosaurus like this. I mean, look at this thing, it's gorgeous. I mean, look at the white on the face and the frill along with the dark blue that fades into green and is also separating into black. And It's just absolutely gorgeous. And I love the brown and how it melds the colors together. I mean, Really, it, it's gorgeous. I mean, look at this. <laughs> yeah, the, the sculpting is absolutely superb. I mean, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> absolutely stunning. So, there you have it. And it, it, this is an absolutely spectacular figure. I mean, the detail on it is exquisite. Now, like all beasts of the Mesozoic figures, um, he does have, well, or at least the larger ones, uh, such as the Styracosaurus and uh, his cousin Pachyrhinosaurus, which we reviewed last week, he does have 20 points of articulation. So, he has a movable jaw, like so. It doesn't open all that wide, but it does open. He has a movable tongue. I don't know how well you can see that, but his tongue does move up and down, a little bit side to side, but it's hard to get in there with that beak and how how little it opens. Um, his head and neck move, like so. 
yeah, his joints are also a little tight, so I would recommend definitely um, warming him up with a hair dryer. He can move his head up like this as well, but uh, his downward mo his movement in the neck is kind of limited. Now, he can do a full 360 with his little eggs uh, in the front, um, though I don't recommend it because of the clearance issues due to the shoulder joints. And like all the Ceratopsians, he can swivel his legs out at the shoulder as well. Um, he can bend his arm at the elbow and twist it like so. And you can straighten these, but again, the joints are tight. So again, I don't really recommend doing that um, until you've warmed them up with a hair dryer. Um, but yeah, he is fully, fully poseable. The legs also move uh, a full 360 in the back, though again, I don't recommend it because of clearance issues. Um, he can bend both knees on either side of his body. But again, very, very tight joints, so you're going to want to loosen them up with a hair dryer. He can bend his ankle about that much, either direction. And he does have foot swivel. Uh, forward and back a little bit, and side to side. So yeah, he he's fully, fully articulated in that capacity. His tail does move at the base, nowhere else, but um, can move up and down and side to side. Now, his side to side movement in his torso is a little bit limited because of clearance issues, but he can move his torso right and left a little bit and way more up and down. I mean, honestly, look at that. He can move it up and down a lot. Yeah, but um, yeah, a little bit limited due to just where his the placement of his legs are um, on the figure. But yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous figure. And I love it. I mean, really, this is the penultimate Centrosaurus figure uh, for anyone and who wants it. And let's compare him with the two juvenile variants for the same toy line. So, yeah, you can see he's absolutely huge. So, yeah, there's the monoclone, there is the uh, monoclonius variant or rather the juvenile Centrosaurus variant, I should say, the brown variant, that's based off prehistoric beasts, and the Kickstarter exclusive Monoclonius variant that's based off the Dino Riders. And honestly, I really like the comparison between the adult and the Dino and the Dino Riders Monoclonius variant Centrosaurus because it really looks like this is the juvenile of this adult. So he really looks quite similar and yeah just absolutely gorgeous i also kind of like to think that this um brown variant is basically one that has not started hit developing his adult colors yet or her adult colors yet we may also get a brown variant of the adult figure but i'm not sure yet i have heard rumors about it but i i, I can't confirm or deny anything at this time because i am in the dark on that and David Silva, the creator of the toy line, has not announced anything. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, Centrosaurus, as I have said before in one of my previous videos, it is such a cool dinosaur. I mean, this is a herd-dwelling uh, herbivore that would have lived in huge, huge herds like wildebeest do today. Um, we actually have fossil bone beds comprising only this species in places like Alberta, Canada, that show us they were moving in vast herds. And, yeah, there were also three different, well, I mean, sorry, there were also th two different species of um, Centrosaurus, and many other dinosaurs have once been thought to be species of Centrosaurus that are part of the same um, family, like Ineosaurus and uh, some other uh, Centrosaurus like uh, Achelosaurus and even Pachyrhinosaurus on occasion. But yeah, yeah. Centrosaurus, uh, the two main species for this dinosaur are Centrosaurus apertus, which you see here, and Centrosaurus nasicornis.
Now, the interesting thing about this dinosaur as well is that in addition to being a very no um, notable dinosaur and very easily recognizable is that there's a lot of individual variation in these animals as well. I mean, this individual has a forward bent horn, but they also had horns that curved back depending on the individual or sideways or um, down and then up almost like a lightning bolt shape. Just an incredible, incredible amount of variation between them. Centrosaurus is also one of the few dinosaurs we also have um, evidence for cancer as well because there has been a specimen of this dinosaur found with um, osteosarcoma and the only reason it died is because it was swept away and drowned in the flash flood that killed it and its entire herd. Uh, this animal did not just die I um, did not die of the cancer, it died of um, a natural disaster. But um, in the environment in which it lived, which was um, the dinosaur park formation in Alberta, Canada, and across the rest of uh, Western North Earth America around uh, 75 million years ago, this dinosaur would have lived alongside Gorgosaurus and Despletosaurus. Um, it would have also lived alongside Edmontosaurus and um, a couple of species of Chasmosaurus and other Ceratopsians. Just an incredible array of animals lived alongside this creature. And it, it, lived, it came from one of the most diverse Cretaceous environments ever discovered. And we know a lot about this dinosaur because of how many skeletons we have of it. It is completely known. So, yeah, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous uh, animal, and it's featured in all sorts of dinosaur books and movies. It's been featured in Planet Dinosaur, it's been featured in um, Prehistoric Beasts under the name of uh, Monoclonius, and um, Dinosaur by Christopher Reeve, uh, again as Monoclonius, but um, yeah, just a very, very famous animal and absolutely wonderful. You can actually see one of these um, Centrosaurus in the Museum of Natural History in New York as well. But yeah, in regards to length for this figure, it is approximately a little over 16 inches if you include the horn. Um, it is very, very slightly longer than the uh, Pachyrhinosaurus, but it's a little bit lighter in regards to weight. I mean, this is still a very heavy figure. It's it's about a pound in weight, but it's slightly lighter than the Pachyrhinosaurus. Pachyrhinosaurus is basically a Sherman tank. This thing is not. Now, um, despite it being said to be 118th scale, this is not entirely accurate. This is closer to, I believe, either 113th or 115th scale, honestly. But I really don't feel bothered by that at all. It, it, well, some dinosaurs, um, they had individuals in their populations that were larger on average than others. Um, and some populations of the same species of animals alive today, such as uh, bison and wolves, reach larger body sizes in different environments, such as further north, uh, in order to conserve body heat. So. It's possible Centrosaurus went through the same thing, so I'm not holding it against uh, David Silva for making it a little bigger. And and uh, yeah, just use your imagination. Say it's some, say it's just a little bit larger than normal. But uh, yeah, this figure uh, was about eighty-five dollars on uh, the backer kit campaign when um, yeah when it was available for pre-order. Now it's I believe around ninety dollars if I am correct. Um, but it is still pretty affordable. Just save up a little bit, and uh, yeah, if you really want a, a great large uh, Beasts of the Mesozoic figure to uh, really a, a stand out in your collection, um, I would say this is it. It is beautifully colored. It's going to draw people's attention, and people are going to go. People are going to go. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be majorly impressed by this. And, yeah, 
there are going to be larger ceratopsians too, so yeah, it's going to look absolutely spectacular alongside them. Hmm. So I cannot recommend this figure enough. So this is Saber Rex saying, hang on, don't be afraid to play with toys. Be a toy nerd. Be proud of it. Had, had never grow out of, of what you love. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.